Hey guys, Fred here. The following clips are from Elders Rising, episode 9. And I hope you enjoy. I've listened to the books on tape from Lieutenant Colonel um, Grossman, who did the on killing and on combat and stuff like that. And he talks about the psychological aspects um, of war fighting. And he was talking about, in the book On Killing, that, because um, you always hear the, the stories about shell shock and, and everything, um, and throughout the history of warfare, until very, very recently, until we learned how to break those psychological barriers, um, the killing was done by just a handful of people that were like, yeah, okay, this is, this is what it is, and they accepted that. So you look at at warfares, like in World War II, I believe the number of rounds, at least on the U.S. side, the number of rounds expended versus the number of um, casualties, and I believe this is in, in the European theater against the Germans and whatnot, I believe it was something like 400 and something thousand rounds to one. Because most people would shoot over their heads or whatever, and you, you know, you have these people that understand that the war is important and it needs to be fought and it needs to be won, but we are so morally opposed to killing that that's what caused that, that shell shock. It was more about that fear and that hate of having to kill another human being that was causing that, was causing that because that is such a heavy burden to have to carry whether you know it's right and you know it's justified or not unless you're a total psychopath or a sociopath it's still not acceptable you don't want to do it because you know you look at all these instances where enemy soldiers will run up on each other one on one and a lot of times they point their guns at each other and then they just go their separate ways especially when that that person to person that face to face comes to be it is less likely for them to kill each other and they said he broke it down from so far from so far away engaging with rifles it's more more likely coming down into the closer combat ranges it becomes i'd imagine it is the muskets and the different distance between your rifles versus mm -hmm. like your muskets is, is mm -hmm. significant mm -hmm. in your accuracy yeah and and anyway so he goes down and it says bayonets the bayonets were less likely nice and the least likely of all and we see this in all the movies people are always snapping people's necks or gouging their eyes out or or whatever to kill them so those are the least likely things to happen they have happened and they will happen they will always happen but they're the least likely because you get face to face you see yourself you see another human being there was a book that i read that was called ordinary men um it was about uh, one of the the skill squadron, kill squadrons in for um, for the Germans, and it was made up of um, these men that you you would think a lot of their like elite or or massive like their kill squadrons would be these radicalized youth, and it wasn't. It was these men. The average age was like 34, and they were like carpenter or baker. You know, there was like 130 guys or something like that. I don't remember, but. Um, it goes through and it talks about their story and they were they were some of the first th their job was to go to these towns and and um round up the jews and then take them out outside of the of the town and, and kill them and the it goes in it goes into some of the journals of the psychologists that were in support like supporting that those groups and it was like the first night that they had to go and execute a large number of jews they the the psychologist told the the whatever leader I, I don't know that remember the names but he's like okay now give them extra rations of, of alcohol and encourage them to speak among themselves about this event and encourage them to and and he was like okay and you need to get them to have a point and that, that was a bonding point and it hardened them to each other and then he goes through and then he goes like okay then like three days later they they went back and they were given the opportunity to talk about it but it was it was like a they were it was it was manipulated in a sense like oh they're they encouraged them to talk about it to you but not to each other and don't it, it should be something that they remember silently to each other and it was like a silent bond that they had and and 
he, he the it, it was just it was it was completely disgusting to see how these men went from ordinary people and they became this 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 savage monsters savage monsters exactly and it was it, it was it it was a it was a horrific um it's a horrific book but it's just it, it's there there's so much evil that wants to be in the world mm-hmm. and if we just go on with what we're told and if we just do what we're 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 supposed to we enable that evil as an album chapter 60 and I don't remember the verses um, I wish I did but it's talking about um, you know to rise up and do the things because of your children or else the sword of justice will fall upon you Again, thanks for watching Elders Rising, episode 9. Um, well, buddy, if you like, subscribe and share, and have a great day. Rock the party, everybody. Regardless of what Mitch says, rock the party.